Politics, where politics always rocks. You've just been rocked by Rockin' Politics. I'm your host, Hillary Rainbow. Thanks so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking to Kayla Harris from Ballotpedia. Ballotpedia is an online encyclopedia of American politics and elections. Their goal is to inform people about politics by providing accurate and objective information about politics at all levels of government. They are firmly committed to neutrality, and Ballotpedia's articles are 100% written by professional staff members and a small group of guest editors. All content written by the guest editors is reviewed and fact-checked by Ballotpedia staff. Kayla Harris is from originally from Boise, Idaho. She's a graduate of Utah State University with a bachelor's in economics and international studies. After living in China for a semester, Kayla returned to the United States where she completed a master's in economics. During her graduate studies, she worked at a think tank called Strata. She joined Ballotpedia in January of 2014, where she has been the project director for the energy and environmental policy projects ever since. Ballotpedia's mission is to inform people about politics by providing accurate and objective information, and they're firmly committed to neutrality as a standard, and they have approximately 230,000 articles on federal, state, and local politics, offices, candidates, and elections. And we all know what's going on. If you turn the TV on at any level, you can take a look and get a glimpse, if you dare, into what's going on. <laughs> and it's becoming quite a circus. So I'm really excited to talk to Kayla today about her thoughts on what's happening with all of the stuff going on with Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders. So welcome, Kayla. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. So if you could get one thing out in this short podcast, what would it be when it comes to the election? What's one of your most important standing topics right now today? I think I think something that's really important for voters to understand is that not all hope is lost. <laughs> there's always something that there's always something that you can do to make a difference in your community. Uh, there are definitely elections that you can get involved in um, on the local level, you know, state, national level. And whether you're getting involved because you like the status quo and you like how things are going, uh, or maybe you're really unhappy and so you want to make a difference. But there's there's always something that you can do to make that difference. So positive change, positive change is possible. Now, if you look on CNN and you look at the nightly news, and, and the, what, what do you feel is the, the overall feeling in the country right now, you know, being so immersed in politics and being in such a position to see it the way you see it, what do you think is really on people's minds right now, and what are people most concerned with? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, well, especially on the, I don't really watch the news that often, but I've been traveling a lot the last month, and so everywhere you go, there's CNN playing inside all the airports. And it's definitely, I feel, I don't know, at least like the news anchors to me make it seem like people are really afraid. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if that's really the case, but I think that's something that you see a lot in the media and on TV. But I don't, I mean, I don't know, readers, at least the readers that we hear from and the people who reach out to us, they're always really excited about the content that we have and they're really excited about the service that we're offering, which is all of these great articles across all these different policy areas. And I'd like to think that we're, that we're offering something new and different that isn't really seen by a lot of people and people like that and are responding really positively. And that's what people want is they want this, they want information so that they can take it and decide for themselves what they think about policies or politicians or an election. Yeah, and if you're listening right now, you can go to Ballotpedia.org and you can find some of the articles that Kayla is speaking about, and the links will be available on SendRocksNow.com. Kayla, it, I think you're right. I just traveled myself, and while I was walking through the airport, saw CNN all over and people kind of staring up at the TV, and, mm -hmm. you know, there's this general, you know, malaise going on where people really don't know what they want to do. Trump offers an interesting perspective. They all do, really. They all have their own unique campaign, obviously, but what it really comes down to is the informed voter, don't you think? Yeah, it's really about people deciding what it is, like what is it that I as a voter value, what is important to me, and then how do I find a candidate that lines up with those values so that I can make sure that the policies in the future that I want to see is being enacted. 
So Ballotpedia offers this information, this kind of library, if you will, for people to self-educate themselves on true issues that really do concern the country versus going along with the hype that the media offers. Because the media, the mainstream media seems to focus mostly on the drama, on some of the, you know, the, the topics I think are rather outdated, you know. Um, I think people are concerned with, you know, GMO labeling, vaccine agendas, you know, climate change and whatever that means to the person. Um, and the, the candidates don't really seem to be addressing some of those issues. And so do you guys offer topics or pe where politicians stand on topics such as that? Yeah, this has actually been a big thing. We've been, we're actually all on a conference this week in Charleston together, and it's been a big thing that we're talking about is how we feel like, especially at the presidential level, there hasn't really been a discussion in the media about the policies. It's really been more about the politics and the individuals and the, and the character and creating all this drama around the election. And it hasn't been a discussion of like, well, what kind of policies is this person going to put into place if they get elected into office? And so that's something we've really been talking about is how can we find that information and distill it for readers so that it's easy. And, we, I mean, we do have that. We have pages on all the different candidates and what they've said in the past about certain issues, how they feel about it. And then we also have policy issues. For Like, for example, we have pages about energy policy in each of the 50 states and just saying, in your state, this is what's happening right now with energy. And so trying to give readers both the context of, like, where things are now and then what politicians want to do one day if they get into office. Which is really what we should be hearing, I think, personally. I think we should be hearing these things that you're exactly what you just said. We should be hearing these things. So thank you for putting this together and being part of the team that put it together for Ballotpedia because information is power. And to have an empowered population to be able to be informed, well informed, to really understand uh, where candidates stand and their supporters, because I think once you get a candidate into office, you also have their entourage come with them. So you you do have a wide variety of different people, and and I don't think too many often look at these kinds of issues. They go on the drama, they go on the character of mudslinging, they go on the media campaigns that are done. So this is really a great service. Um, so where, who are you going to vote for? Can I ask? Oh, uh, you can ask. I don't know yet. I'm waiting to see how things shape up. Um, I'm curious to see who the final two candidates are. I've been reading a lot. I live in Washington State, and we don't have our primaries until um, later in the year, and so I'm still I'm still waiting to see who's sticking around because <laughs> things have been changing so much lately. It's hard to know who's going to be there. It's the hard to day. keep track unless, unless you're watching the tabloid headlines. Yeah. Uh, what What issues are most important to you as a as a as a woman as a voter? I don't know how old you are, but uh, you know you sound young. So yeah. what 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 issues do, what issues are most important for you right now? Um, I mean, I write about energy policy, and it's something that I've written about for many years. And so that's something that I'm, I'm really passionate about and I think is really interesting. Um, I'm also from the West. I grew up in Idaho. I went to school in Utah for a long time. And so to me, like, federal lands, like public land issues are also really important. Talking about, like, recreation, access to recreation, uh, who should be managing public lands, how should they be managed, those are issues that, that I really care about. But, that, again, that's really regional. Um, there's a big discussion about that in the West and then by Western senators that are in D.C., but that hasn't really, I mean, I imagine most people living in, like, in Tennessee or something maybe don't really care <laughs> that much about well, federal plans. You make a good point there, Kayla, because if you're on the East Coast or you live in a city, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes those land politics don't really cross your path every day because you don't live in it. But when you live out West, and having just come from out West, I've seen the flooding, I've seen what's going on. But I also saw some other things, you know, uh, where the wildfires were last year in California. We drove through those forests and we took a look at the, at the ground and the charcoal that's now on the ground going into the waters, cleaning out and the toxins and these kinds of things from the soil to make the soil better really does benefit everybody because our food grows in it. It, it does have a connective value to all Americans and to even the people around the world who get their food supplies, perhaps from us. Um, the energy topic, what do you feel people really need to know about the energy, pol the energy policies at work? Oh, good. I love getting to talk about this. <laughs> um, I think a big thing 
So the, the, the biggest thing that I think people really should know about and be, and be thinking about is the Clean Power Plan, which is um, the Obama administration's big plan for combating carbon emissions and therefore climate, climate change. Um, and it's actually, it's in front of, well, it was in front of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court put a stay on it. And so now it's like not only do we have this, like, big energy policy that's being discussed and debated all across all the different states, but then you also have this new dynamic of the Supreme Court and how that role and how the new justice um, eventually, if one is put on the bench, uh, how they'll rule on a case in the future. Um, but I think the Clean Power Plan is really important because I think the Daily Beast called it Obamacare for the air. And it's a very, really complex law that's going to change how and what kind of electricity people get. Hmm, so that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So when you say it's going to change the kind of electricity that people get, what do you mean? Um, yeah. Well, I guess I should phrase it a little differently. The, the goal of the law is to um, affect the kind of the amount of emissions that power plants are allowed to put out. And so each state has certain carbon emission goals that they'll have to reach, and they'll have to decrease how many carbon dioxide emissions come out of that state by 2030. And so for some states, they have pretty low goals, and so it'll be pretty achievable for them. But for other states, they have really high goals, and so they're going to really have to transform their energy sector to try to make sure that they can meet this, assuming this plan goes into action, that they can meet this plan and meet these guidelines. Hmm. And how do you see our current oil-based energy industry changing? Ooh, it is it <laughs> as much as like politics is like is is kind of in a whirl, a whirlwind right now. You have the same thing in the energy industry because the price of oil is so low, and I don't think anyone really saw that it would get as low as it has. And so that's shifted a lot, made, shifted the policies a lot, and shifted people's perspective because it's a question of how how do you make a profit? How do you exist? Like how, how do pol- policies on the ground change when you have oil that's $30 a barrel? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I can tell you that airfare hasn't gone down much because of the oil <laughs> decrease. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I feel like well, planes have gotten fancier. I don't know if you've noticed that. The last few planes I've flown on have all been brand new. Well, so. because they can afford to buy them all now because they're yeah. making so much money. <laughs> <laughs> that must be good. <laughs> Well, this is a very complicated topic, and I want to acknowledge that for listeners. So if they wanted to go on Ballotpedia.org to find out more information about specifics, Mm -hmm. could they do that? How do they do that? Give our listeners a little bit of guidance on how to dig into a specific topic. Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, So we have, I mean, they can go to, they can just Google Clean Power Plan Ballotpedia, and our page will come up. Um, Or they can go to ballotpedia.com, and we have a search bar there. But we also have, it picks up what state you're living in, and so it'll come up and tell you about voting in your state, about candidates that are running, about policy in your state. And so from the front page, it should be fairly easy to navigate to what it is, the topic that you're interested in. Great. And now on the site, when you go in and you take a look at these these uh, different topics and the politicians that are connected and how they view the topic or how they have voted for the topic, do you feel that this gives the average, ordinary, everyday citizen an advantage because of the information that your organization provides? I would like to think so. I like, I'd like to think that because we, we come from a neutral perspective, we try to provide all the information, all the facts, um, and then we also like to give context. And that's something that we've really been working on improving and we're, we're constantly trying to do is to give readers not only like is this, this is what's happening in your state, but this is how it compares to other states. And this is what's happened historically. And that's something that we're really working on so that readers can then go, oh, if this is what's happened before and this is how things are now, this is where I want them to be. And it can, it can help guide them in their decision making. Great. Well, I have to say thank you so much again for being part of such a, a good uh, generalized type project because this really does give a gift to the public if they're willing to use it and they're willing to spend some time navigating through it and doing their own research instead of just depending on perhaps other people's opinions or, you know, which is a really dangerous ground when it comes to mainstream media. You know, the Internet really does save us in this way where we're able to do these things. Um, So people can go to sendrocksnow.com, give us some feedback on what you think. You can go to ballotpedia.org and look up your favorite topic or perhaps a topic that you don't know too much about 
and you can find more about it and you can study it, read it, share it with other people and get the word out so that we can make an educated decision when it comes to the voting polls in the fall and not just follow along with the drama. Kayla Harris, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Thank you for being here. And until next time, keep your mind open and think for yourselves. Good night, everyone.